Hello. Why does writing matter to philosophy? Why is it ever necessary to write? Socrates didn't write, but the history of philosophy was written by the philosophers who did write. And Socrates' contribution, his great contribution, only exists because Plato wrote dialogues that record what Socrates said. So that's a, a topic that you can treat in a philosophical way. And in contemporary philosophy or modern philosophy, uh, Jacques Derrida has made a lot of this. But I'm going to talk about this on a much more basic level. I'm going to continue what I was talking about last time in my previous chapter of my book. Why I write, what it means to me, what writing means to me. And it means a lot more than just conveying my thoughts. Um, I've mentioned my typewriter a number of times, my plastic battery operated typewriter. So I thought I'd actually show you. Here it is. Oops. It's um, from 1987, made by Canon. And they're quite, they're relatively cheap on eBay because you can't get ribbons for them. But what not a lot of people know is that it types beautifully on thermal paper. And I got this, I got a whole load of thermal paper relatively cheaply. Um, it costs about, I know, ten pounds for a hundred sheets, uh, but um, it's definitely worth it. So anyway, why you know why does it matter what you use to write with? It matters a lot. I mean, think of a musician and their, say, a singer and his guitar. Um, it's not thought weird or strange to love your guitar. But I suppose guitars were actually designed to be kind of lovable, you know, all curvy, etc. Easy to hold, nice to hold. Um, yeah, I'll tell you something, actually. I wasn't sure where I was going to say this. Yesterday I did an open mic set at a pub in Sheffield, the Toolmakers, uh, in Kellam Island. And I sang three songs by... Um, what was the first one? Dylan, Simon and Garfunkel, and Rolling Stones. And I was complimented on my singing. <laughs> uh, but actually also, I bought, I actually bought in a guitar from eBay for the occasion. Um, which is quite a nice guitar, it wasn't, you know, very expensive. Um, yeah, you know, so if I say I love my guitar, you wouldn't bat an eyelid. If I say I love my typewriter, what's the difference, you know? I love the process of writing means a lot um, because my writing is me I mean these videos are me in a sense they are part of what I do what I am how I express myself and that's to me that's the essence of philosophy it's existential philosophy it is about the self and what is possible for the self what what it means to be to exist and know that you exist, what it means to be in the world. Anyway, let's get on with the chapter. This is the 25th chapter of my book, Philosophizer's Bible, and it's called On Writing. Socrates didn't write, at least so the tradition has it. Maybe there existed writings of Socrates that were destroyed in the fire of the Library of Alexandria. But then wouldn't other writers have referred to them, quoted them? It seems unlikely. What we do know from Plato and Xenophon is that he used his mouth a lot. And quite a mouth he had on him too, from the evidence of Plato's dialogues. You would not want to find yourself on the wrong end of that mouth. There's a lot to be said for philosophizing on one's feet. Professional philosophers recognize that being quick on your feet is a virtue, although in my experience, when academics philosophize standing up, 
They usually prefer to repeat phrases they learned or practice by rote. The stock objections and replies. An original thought on occasions when it does occur is likely to be punished by some superficially clever remark or else baffled silence. That's from my experience. And I'm not talking about you know, my <laughs> remarks or anybody in particular. Um, it's a game where people try to outdo one another. Um, but original philosophy does not often get done in that way, sadly. The question, why write, is pressing if, like me, you absolutely hate reading. I said that in Philosophizer. I killed my taste for reading. That's in the chapter Sphinx of Black Quartz. If you really want to depress me, give me a book or article that I must read. No, thank you. Most philosophical writers, hard as they try, are pathetically transparent, regardless of all their logical shenanigans. You see the punchline pages before it comes. What a deadly bore. You tell me you have to write. When you've philosophized for all you are worth, when you've thought and thought and every thought path leads round the same tight circle, then all that is left is the writing. Writing about philosophy, writing about the act of philosophizing, about writing, about writing about philosophy, about writing about writing, etc. Disappearing up your own whiz hole, as a friend once remarked. Reflection is good. Reflexivity is a danger and sometimes a curse. Ouroboros, the image of a snake eating its own tail. Better stop thinking before you disappear into an infinitely dense point mass. Go for a walk or a swim, some healthy activity at least. Play the guitar. I know why I write, as I've already explained, because I get off on it. The same reason I philosophize. To my mind, it's the only good reason, the only healthy reason. But where's the enjoyment in it? Writing is always hard work. At least it had better be. Let's say that one writes to fend off boredom, just as one breathes to fend off asphyxiation. The two states are related in some ways. Boredom is mentally asphyxiating. Asphyxiation, okay, it isn't boring, but maybe boring to watch if you're a serial killer running out of ideas, ha ha. Seriously, why write? Because for the writer, the activity not only staves off boredom, you enjoy it. As I said, creativity is its own reward. In philosophy too. True, every writer secretly wants to please. You can't help it. Even when you set out deliberately to annoy people, at the back of your mind, or even at the forefront of your mind, is the expectation and knowledge that others will be pleased. Look how daring I am. I suppose you could consider that self-critique, but... Does it diff is it different if you, you're aware of it? I use a typewriter for most of my work because I enjoy the physical process of putting black marks down on paper. Even when I'm on my computer, I have typing sounds switched on so that I can imagine that I'm typing on my beautiful machine. Nietzsche was given a newfangled typewriter by an admirer as his handwriting had become so illegible the machine broke down after two weeks. He was a nimble thinker. He wrote that thinking should be like dancing rather than a heavy plod. Nietzsche loved dancing. He wrote in Zarathustra, quote, If they want me to believe in their God, they'll have to sing me better songs. I would believe only in a God who knows how to dance. Unquote. I can't even begin to imagine the torture Nietzsche must have gone through, trying to get his thoughts down, pecking at one key at a time on his primitive contraption. Plunk, plunk, plunk. Or imagine a typewriter that causes you physical pain as you press the keys. Let's say that an old-fashioned typewriter is your one and only means of getting words down, and this is the only typewriter you have available or allowed to use, designed by a sadist. What exquisite torture for a political prisoner. We'll allow you to write whatever you like, you can have as much paper as you like. Enjoy. 
Wouldn't you welcome the pain? The electric shocks as they punished your fingers? The deafening sound of loudspeakers magnifying the clatter of to maximum decibels? You are suffering for your art, to be sure. But more than that, you have mentally transformed the pain, made it into something positive, by the very fact that the pain becomes your way of making the words come. That's an interesting thought experiment which teaches me something. As much as I like or even love writing, I wouldn't put myself through that. Looking into myself as deeply as I'm able, I don't believe that the world needs my writing. I don't have a cause that is so important that I'm prepared to suffer and suffer for the sake of that cause. I've said over and over again, this is for me. I write for me. I don't mind the fact that writing can be hard, very hard on occasion, but the process has to be smooth and easy. I remember the time I decided as a final year undergraduate that from that time onwards my essays would be typed. I had an old Remington portable that my Aunt Vicky gave me with beautiful action and a little lever that you could move to the right or left to make the touch firmer or lighter. Using a touch typing chart, I taught myself the keys in an hour. Then I spent the following years overcoming the bad habit I'd formed from my poorly self-designed touch typing course of having to think each time I put a letter down on the page. I'm over that now. I am fast, very fast. Nietzsche would have approved. Typewriters are now making a big comeback helped by enthusiastic promotion from the movie star Tom Hanks, with collectors and enthusiasts swooning over different classic models. I'm not into typewriter fetishism. I'm just happy that my machine works. And if it breaks down, I can easily find another similar model on eBay for not too much dough. My experience with learning to touch type taught me a very important lesson. I wasn't gonna spend hours daily doing those silly exercises when I could just get started right away. Why go through all the hassle? But sometimes a straight line is not the shortest distance between A and B. That, uh, that thought, sometimes a straight line is not the shortest distance between A and B, could just about sum up this book because I've deliberately gone in an extremely weird and wobbly line and I'm sure if anyone has followed all these videos they will have t been puzzled more than a few times about where this is going and why and so on but if you think you can just say what you've got to say in a, in a straightforward way just say it um, you're wrong it doesn't it, it doesn't happen it doesn't come across there's a certain path you have to go down and you discover that path when you write. You may plan all sorts of things out in your head. I want to say this, this and this. But when you actually start putting words together, it may take you in a completely different direction. And that's what happened to me. Um, I've mentioned my previous book, Philosophizer. That was based on 20 years of writings from blogs, and various journals and things. And I started the writing that became this book when Philosophizer was published two years ago. So this is much more, if you like, together in the sense that it was intended from the beginning to be a certain kind of a book. But two years ago, I had absolutely no idea how it would have turned out the way it did. <coughs> Um, but it's wonderful for me to have discovered this, to have made this journey, to have taken this journey. And I'm enjoying it now, you know, giving these videos, going over it again. And I mentioned in a previous video, I don't know if I'll ever write another book again. Um, when I finished Philosophizer, I knew there was work still to do. But this it says everything. So it's a, it's a puzzle. It's, it's, it's something I'll have to 
think about over a period of time. But um, anyway, I hope you stay with me for the next video. We're over nearly three quarters of the way through the book now. Uh, I think it's another um, eight videos to go. Goodbye and see you next time.